organisms require cell division in order to increase in cell number. For example, when an organism grows in size or when a tissue such as skin needs to be replenished. Mitosis is the key process in cell division and involves the segregation of chromosomes to form two chromosome clusters that are identical both to each other and to the original chromosome composition of the parent cell. This means that the process of mitosis has to be very accurate. A cell that is missing chromosomes may die because it lacks genes that are essential for its function, while a cell with too many chromosomes may become abnormal because certain genes are expressed at too high a level. So how does mitosis take place, and what ensures the accuracy of chromosome segregation? Before mitosis, in interphase, the chromosomes are inside the nucleus, which is surrounded by a nuclear envelope. The nuclear envelope is a double membrane structure that separates the content of the nucleus from the cytoplasm. In humans, every cell has 46 chromosomes, 22 pairs of chromosomes 1 through 22, and either two X chromosomes in females, or an X and a Y chromosome in males. During interphase, many genes are transcribed, and therefore the chromosomes are in an extended or decondensed state, like a bowl of spaghetti. In order to accurately transmit one copy of each chromosome to each daughter cell, several things must happen before the segregation process can begin. First, the chromosomes must duplicate by DNA replication. After DNA replication, the new copies of each chromosome, known as sister chromatids, do not float away from each other, but remain attached by a protein complex called cohesin. This attachment will become important later in mitosis. Second, the spindle has to form. The spindle is made of microtubules that will ultimately move the chromosomes during mitosis. The microtubules emanate from structures called centrosomes. Each cell is born with a single centrosome that resides in the cytoplasm. Before mitosis, the centrosome duplicates to form two centrosomes, and these centrosomes begin to nucleate the microtubules that will form a bipolar spindle. We have to keep in mind that the centrosomes and their associated microtubules are in the cytoplasm, while the chromosomes are in the nucleus. So how do spindle microtubules gain access to the chromosomes? The answer to this will become clear when we get further into mitosis. In addition to replicating, chromosomes have to become more compact or condensed so that they do not become entangled as they try to separate during chromosome segregation. Chromosome condensation begins during a stage called prophase. Remember that at this point each chromosome is composed of two sister chromatids that are attached to each other. Also in prophase, the centrosomes separate away from each other as they continue to nucleate microtubules. Now comes the time when the microtubules have to contact the chromosomes. Contact between the microtubules and the chromosomes happens in prometaphase, when the nuclear envelope breaks down. The disassembly of the nuclear envelope allows the microtubules to attach to chromosomes at specialised structures called kinetochores. Kinetochores are large multiprotein complexes that assemble on each sister chromatid at a site called the centromere. The way microtubules attach to kinetochores is important. Kinetochores of sister chromatids need to attach to microtubules that emanate from opposite poles of the spindle, namely from different centrosomes. When this happens, chromosomes are said to biorient. If kinetochores of sister chromatids were to bind to microtubules emanating from the same centrosome, these two chromatids could end up in the same daughter cell. So how do microtubules attach correctly to kinetochores of sister chromatids? This is where the association or cohesion between sister chromatids comes into play. The attachment of kinetochores of sister chromatids to microtubules from opposite spindle poles generates tension between the two sister chromatids, and this signals to the cell that the attachment is correct and therefore can persist. But if kinetochores of sister chromatids attach to microtubules from the same spindle pole, no tension is generated and this attachment becomes unstable and does not persist. When chromosomes biorient, they are subjected to equivalent pulling forces from either side of the spindle. As a result, the bioriented chromosomes align on the spindle midzone in a conformation known as the metaphase plate. At this point, the cell is poised to separate the sister chromatids so that they are pulled by microtubules to opposite poles of the spindle. But before this can happen, the cell must ensure that all chromosomes have bioriented. If sister chromatids separate prematurely, they will attach to microtubules at random, 
increasing the likelihood that they will segregate to the same spindle pole and consequently to the same daughter cell. To avoid premature sister chromatid separation, kinetochores that are not stably attached to microtubules generate a signal that activates a regulatory mechanism called the spindle checkpoint pathway. This checkpoint pathway blocks sister chromatid separation and other aspects of cell cycle progression until chromosomes have bioriented. Once all chromosomes bioriant, the checkpoint signal is extinguished and mitosis can continue. As we noted earlier, chromosome biorientation ensures that sister chromatids will separate away from each other. This separation happens in anaphase when a key subunit of the cohesin complex that holds the sister chromatids together is cleaved by a protease called separase, leading to the disintegration of sister chromatid cohesion. The microtubules can now pull the separated sister chromatids towards their respective spindle poles in what is known as anaphase A. In addition, the spindle poles move away from each other in what is known as anaphase B. The combination of these two processes results in the formation of two DNA clusters, each containing one copy of each chromosome. At the end of anaphase, in telophase, the spindle microtubules disassemble, nuclear envelopes assemble around the two chromosome clusters, and the cell divides around its midsection in a process called cytokinesis. Cytokinesis results in the formation of two daughter cells. If all went well, the two daughter cells will have the identical genetic makeup as that of the parent cell.